Hello, everyone. Welcome to APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so happy to have you join us today. Today's session is measuring with cups, empty and full. We are glad to have you join us today. Today is the APH Virtual Excel Academy, and we are going to focus on measuring with cups. Feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. If you are helping a student or a child, that is okay. We know that some students today, their parents are busy just helping them participate and that is okay. Welcome again to the APH Virtual Excel Academy. Today is measuring with cups, empty and full. I am going to turn it over to Jessica so we can get learning. Hi, Jessica. Hello. This is Miss Jess. And I am going to be working with you today on the concepts of empty and full. And we're going to do some measuring with cups. I want to make sure that I introduce myself. I'm a teacher of students who are blind, visually impaired. I have white skin. I'm wearing dark rectangular glasses and my hair and my sweater are the same color today. They're bright orange. And the color of orange that my sweater and hair are kind of repined me of fall. So, if you saw this color orange, what comes to mind might be the smell of pumpkin pie or the taste of cinnamon and nutmeg. It's that kind of orange, really rich and vibrant. Before we really get started today, schedules are so important to me. I like to make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing and I want you to know exactly what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to share my screen right now and give you a visual schedule, but I also have a tactile schedule that you can feel free to use. The first thing that we always do is log in or get ready for our activity. I might use a bell or a piece of wood for my work table that lets me know that I'm about to do something. The next part of our schedule is going to be stretching. I like to stretch to get ready for our activity. So if you have a rubber band with you, that's a wonderful symbol to let you know what we're about to do, stretching. For my actual activity, I always use a piece of wood because I usually do my work on a table or a tray. So whatever you use as your surface for your activity, that's a nice symbol to let you know. After we do our activity, our first activity, we're going to take a break. For my tactile symbol, I use something soft like a cotton ball, or if I lay down on a mat for a break, I might have a piece of my mat. Our break today is going to be a short one, about five to seven minutes just to get resituated. After our break, we'll go ahead and do another activity. I like to just use my, still use my wooden, um, wooden block that lets me know I'm going to do a table activity. After that, we'll stretch again with our rubber bands as a symbol, and then we will be all done. For all done, I like to keep it simple. Um, I either hot glue an X onto a piece of cardboard, or add a string to it just for the visual piece. If you use signs, all done. It's your hands, uh, the back of your hands facing away and then you turn them so that your palms are facing away, all done. All right, with that started, let's go ahead and do our stretches. I'm gonna grab my rubber band. So feel that rubber band so we know what is next. And I like three stretches. Our first stretch, arms straight out in front of you. You can put them just a little bit in front of you. You can stretch them all the way and rest them on the table. 
You can hold them up higher. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Some people might have a guide, someone who's helping to pull their arms forward, and that's okay too. Let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Next stretch, we're going to put our arms up. You might just want them a little bit up. You might just rest them on the edge of the table, or someone might help lift your arms. All of them are fine. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Last stretch. This one, I like to wrap my arms right around myself in a hug. You just want to cross your arms. Again, that's fine. If someone helps move your arms, that's also okay. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <sighs> Wonderful. I have stretched. I know now that it's time to start my work. I'll go ahead and pull up our visual schedule as well. But if you have your tactile symbol, we are ready to move on to our activity. So I'm going to move to my workspace. Your workspace camera turned off. Well, I'm gonna turn on my workspace camera. There you go. There we go. So I want to talk about empty and full. And for empty and full, are we on the empty and full down here? Yes, you are. Oh, perfect. So for empty and full, I have two different symbols. I have a visual system. And I've made these very large. Some people prefer a visual cue of empty and full, and others prefer a tactile. For my tactile, I just used hot glue to make an empty circle and hot glue to make a full circle. So these are the concepts we're going to talk about today and how we know if something is empty and full and how to make something empty and full. One of the first things I have are two cups. One cup is empty and the other cup is full. So if you have two containers at home, can you get those out right now? They can be two plastic containers. They can be two bowls. They can be two cups. I have two containers of nuts. One of them is empty and one of them is full. It's up to you. And while you're getting our containers, there's a couple ways we can tell if something is empty or something is full. One way is if you're able to see inside the containers, you might see that in my container on the right under empty, either under the symbol empty or the picture empty, there's nothing inside. I can see straight down to the bottom. If I pick that container up, I notice that it feels light. I'm able to lift it very easily. If I put my hand inside, I only feel the bottom of the container. I don't feel anything inside. If I shake my container, I don't hear anything inside. 
all of those cues tell me that this container is empty. If I go to my second container, on the left, underneath my full picture, and next to my full symbol, when I put my hand inside, I feel that there's something in there. If I look, what I have inside is rice. And I can see that my cup is full of rice. If I pick it up, it's heavy. I can't pick it up as easily as my other container. I can tell that there's something inside. I'm gonna dump out a little bit of the rice in here because if I shake it, I can hear a rattling sound inside. That tells me that there's something in this container and that this container is full. You might have experienced having a snack at home. And I know that if I'm eating a snack and my bowl is full, I might get upset or confused if all of a sudden the bowl is empty and there's nothing else inside of it. So when we talk about empty and full, sometimes our snack might be empty. So in this chip bag, there's nothing inside. Sometimes there's something inside. Sometimes I can get chips out of here. But with this container, if I squeeze it, there it's flat. If I pick it up, it's lightweight. So the food inside ran out. It's empty. This container, when I look inside, I see popcorn. If I pick it up, it feels heavy. And when I squeeze it, there's something inside. So this popcorn is full. And if I keep pouring popcorn into a bowl, eventually this container is going to become empty. And that isn't anyone's fault. That's just what happens when we eat all of our snack. So let's make a couple things empty and full. So right now I have an empty bowl. What should I use to make it full? I have some red lentils. I have some rice. I have some popcorn and I have some water. So in the chat, if you're able, why don't you suggest to me what I should use to fill my bowl? You can do an R for rice, an L for lentils, a W for water. And I'll do a couples. L for lentils. So first one I saw. So let's do the lentils. My silver bowl is empty. So let's explore that symbol together. So empty. This one is empty right now. And I know because I can touch the bottom and I don't feel anything inside. I know what it feels like when I hold the bowl. And I know that it might be uncomfortable to have something put in your hands when you're not expecting it. And it's a good practice if anyone is handing you something to touch your hand first so that we know it's safe to touch what's going in our hand. Because if we can't see it, and we feel something cold, we don't know if it's sharp or if it could hurt us or what it is yet. 
it's always safer if someone else invites you to touch what they're touching first. So our bowl is empty. Now, if you have a measuring cup, you can go ahead and use that. I'm gonna use my quarter measuring cup and scoop my lentils. And dump them in. And someone might help you with this. You might have another hand on yours, and that's perfectly fine. Everyone does this activity in their own way. If you don't want to use a measuring cup, I'm going to go ahead and just pour it in. And if I make a mess, that's part of it. After you are done putting whatever you're putting in your bowl, let's explore the bowl. What is inside? If you put your hands in, can you feel something? And again, it might be better to have another person touch what's inside first, just so you know it's okay. So yes, I feel something inside my bowl. When I play with the lentils in the bowl, I can hear them making a sound against the metal sides of the bowl. If your bowl is made out of plastic, it might sound different. Or if your bowl is made out of glass. Or if you've used a cup instead. When I pick up my bowl, it's heavy. It's much heavier than when there was nothing inside. And when I look in my bowl, I can see the red lentils. They're actually orange. They're close to the color of my sweater. But I can see the lentils inside my bowl. This tells me that my bowl is full. So I want to feel my symbol and look at my symbol that tells me this bowl is full. And I know that when it's heavy, when I can feel something inside and when I see something inside, or if I shake it and hear something, it's full. I think I'm gonna measure water for my next measurement. I'm again going to use a measuring cup to do this because I have them. And my water is purple. Right now, when I feel my two containers and I have set them up so that I have my empty symbol next to one and my full symbol next to the other. You can again do this with rice or lentils or popcorn or beads or beans or anything you have at home. This one is empty and it's next to my empty symbol. This container says full and it's next to my full symbol. So this is the container I want to make full. So I'm going to scoop my water and pour it into my full container. When I feel my two containers, 
This one is empty. And this one has water in it. When I put my hand inside, I can feel that there's water in it. Hmm. Jessica, you are frozen completely. Well, that's just the way it goes, doesn't it? Let's see if she joins us again. Hi, Jessica. Here she is. Hello, is it working? I'll get it back on now. I am, this, this internet, I've had issues today. Thank you for being patient, everyone. With technology, we never know what's gonna happen, huh? Fix that. Perfect. Are we all good? Looks wonderful. Perfect. So we have one container that I have filled with water. And if I put my hand inside, I might get surprised if my hand just goes into something that's wet, but someone helps me with that, okay. So this I know has water in it. If I lift it, I can feel that it's heavier than my empty container. And I'm not gonna shake mine around too much, but if I use the end of my measuring spoon, I can hear the water sloshing around. I can also see the different color of purple. So I know that there's something inside my full container. I'm going to dump my water back into the bin. So why don't you try with two containers? Make one of them empty and one of them full. And can you choose which symbol matches? So which symbol matches this bowl that I feel has popcorn inside? It's heavier. It makes a sound when I shake it. So is this container full or empty? Is it full or empty? You might be able to answer that question. You might know that we associated this symbol to mean that there's something inside the bowl, that it's full. And if you do, that's awesome. You can pick that symbol and put it next to that bowl because you understand that this bowl is full. You might not understand that quite yet. And I can show you. This bowl is full. So we're gonna put these symbols with this bowl. Let's try it again. So this container, is it empty or full? So if I put my hands in it, I can feel that there's something inside. If I lift it, I know that it's heavier. And if I shake it, I can hear something moving around. All of those cues tell me that this container is also full. These go together, they match. 
So if there's something inside, it means it's full. So like at dinner or snack time, if there's something in your bowl, it's full. You're ready to eat something. Now let's look at this bowl. If I reach inside, there's nothing in there. If I shake it, I don't hear anything. And I don't see anything inside. When I pick it up, it's lightweight. So if you know, is this bowl empty or full? You might know the answer. You might be able to pick on your own that this is empty. You might need to be shown. So I'll show you. There's nothing inside and it's lightweight. If I can't take anything out of it, that means it's empty. So let's feel the symbol, empty. And look at the picture, empty. They go together. Let's try one last container. And can you tell me, is it empty or full? Use your strategies to figure out if it's empty or full and you might know right away. You might know there's nothing inside. I can't feel it. When I pick it up, it's lightweight. I don't hear anything. That might tell you right away that you know it's empty. But if you don't know right away, that's perfectly fine. We're still learning. This symbol and this symbol, the tactile symbol, mean that there's nothing inside this container. So we can take either symbol that you're using and know that it's empty. There's nothing inside. So if it's snack time or lunch time and there's nothing inside your bowl, it means it's empty. And someone either needs to make it full or you're all done with eating. We have done a lot. So I think it's a good time to go ahead and take our break. I'm gonna pull up our schedule. And since we are done with our activity and ready for our break, I'm gonna move that ahead on our schedule. If you have a symbol for break, like the cotton ball or the cloth, or I am using a little piece of uh, soft mat material, you can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start some music. You're gonna have about five to seven minutes. Before we are ready to come back, I will do um, our three stretches just to get us settled back in so everyone knows when we're about a minute and a half, two minutes out. And let me get the music going.
I have my rubber band to let me know I'm gonna do some stretches to get back settled and ready to do our next activity. We'll do the same three stretches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Arms above you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last stretch. Wrap your arms around yourself or cross them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So our break is going to be all done. So if you have an all done bin that you put your um, symbols into, go ahead and do that. And the next thing we're gonna do is our table activity. Let me pull up our schedule so we have that visual as well. So our break is all done. I'm gonna take it off of my schedule. And now I know that the next thing I'm going to do is a second activity. So let's get moved to our workspace. I wanna talk about measuring cups and measuring and maybe even some prediction with measuring. So this might be a little bit challenging, but I think you can have fun and I think you can do it and I'm not worried. For my measuring cups, I like to draw on them so I can clearly see if I'm able to use my vision that this one, my quarter cup is different from my half cup. If I feel these two measuring cups, I can tell they're different because one of them feels much smaller than my other cup. I might not know how much volume they can hold. I might not know how much I can keep inside, but I do know that one is smaller than the other. The first thing I wanna do, if you have measuring cups, I'd like you to have your quarter cup, half cup, and one cup. So let's see how many of my smallest cups, my quarter cups, do I need to fill up this one? I wonder how many of my quarter cups will fit inside my half cup. I might want to explore and see about setting it inside. I think at least one will fit. So one quarter cup. Let's try it. I'm going to use my water again. And if I make a mess, I make a mess. It's part of learning. So I'm going to scoop. And I might need help. I might need to hold my half cup in place and use my hand to guide myself to pour it inside. Okay, one fit. And I can see that there's space for more. So let's try it. Let's try pouring a second cup. In. Oh, so when I feel inside, I can tell that the water is right up to the top. If I look and I am able to see I can tell with my vision that the water is right up at the top. And if I pick it up, I know it's full. I definitely know that this is full because when I pick it up, it is heavy. Okay, 
I'm going to dump it back into its container. That's maybe my favorite part. Let's take our one cup. So that's the biggest cup. I can tell it's bigger because when I feel my two cups, this one definitely has more space in it. My one cup has more space than my quarter cup does. So let's try it. I'm going to start with one. So I'm going to scoop one quarter cup and pour it into my one cup. And I might need to hold it. I might need to use my hand to guide me so I know I'm pouring it inside. I might need someone else to help me pour it. And that's, those are all wonderful ways to achieve this task. I've poured two of my quarter cups inside. And I can tell that there's still space. If I look at it, I can see there's more space. If I feel it, my fingers are dry, 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 wet. So I still have a, a little bit of space to fill up. I'm gonna try doing one more. Okay, let's see. If I put my fingers in, it's dry and then wet. So I still have some space. If I look inside, I can see that it is almost full to the top, but I have still got space. Let's try one more. And when I touch it, I can tell it's right up to the top. When I look at it, I can see that there's not much more space to add any more. That tells me that it is full. I'm going to pour it back into my tub. So let's try this. I have my metal bowl and I'm going to keep using my quarter cup. So my smallest cup to fill this. Let's count together and see how many quarter cups it takes me to fill this bowl. If you have a bowl at home and you want to count your own and see, you go ahead and do that. Ready. One. Two, and I'm going to keep checking and see. I put my hand and I still have room for more. Three, still have room. Four, I still have room. Five. Six, seven, I still have some room. Eight, ooh, it's pretty close to the top. When I put my hand inside, my finger gets wet right away. I think I'm going to stop there. Now let's do a prediction. I'm going to change from my quarter cup to my half cup. I remember that I needed two quarter cups to fill up my half cup. And I needed about eight cups to fill up my bowl or eight quarter cups to fill up my bowl. So in the chat, why don't you guess how many half cups do you want me to put into this bowl to see if we can fill it up? You decide. So the first number that I see, I'm going to go with. 
You pick any number that you think might fill up this bowl. All right, I see three, so let's try it. I am pouring in one. Two, it's getting close-ish, it's halfway, three, and there is still some space. The next suggestion I got was six, so let's count on. We have three and we need to get to six, so I have three, let's do four. Five. Oh, it's right at the top, but I'm gonna go with six because that's what we had. Six. <laughs> and my bowl overflowed, but not by much. Six was a really good guess. So would you say that this bowl is empty or full? I'm gonna say my bowl is very full. Six was a good guess. That's a good prediction. I'm going to pour my bowl out. And I always have a towel ready, so I'm going to wipe that up. At home, you can do this game with measuring cups and any kind of vessel. If you have a cup, like a regular drinking glass, you can do that. If you have little um, plastic Tupperware containers, you can play the game with that. Let's do just one more prediction. I'm going to use this square Tupperware container. And it's a similar size to my metal bowl that I was using before. Let's use our half cups again. Who would like to make a prediction of how many half cups we might need to fill this container? And this activity is always better if you can feel the exact same container that I have and the cups. So if you do this at home, it'll be more successful. All right, let's do eight. One. Two, three, it feels like it's a little less than half. We're in good shape so far. Four, five, six. We're getting close to the top, but we're not overflowing yet. Seven. Ooh, this is this was a really good guess. Eight. So I am almost exactly at the top of this. Well, the internet is being picky again for Jessica. These happen, so hopefully you did good predictions. You thought about how many of those cups were used to fill the container with that purple water. I think I'm going to make my next bath purple. And Jessica is back again. Hello, Jessica. We can see you but we can't quite hear you. <laughs> so now it's empty. She poured it right back in and she has an empty container. 
Can you hear me again? Now we hear you. All right. That was our last prediction for that activity. So let's go ahead and take a look at our schedule because we are all done. All done with our activity for today. And the last thing that we are going to do are our stretches. So I have my rubber band that lets me know that it is time to do stretches. We're gonna do the same three stretches that we did at the beginning and that we did at our break. The first thing I like to do is put my arms out in front of me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next one, arms straight above me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last stretch. Wrap your arms around yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That lets me know that we are all done with our activity for today. So we can feel our symbol that tells us that we are all done. We can look at our picture. You should be really proud of yourself today. I hope you are. You did some new things. You experimented with, with some new probably textures and new objects. And that can be scary and it can be hard, but we can do hard things and we can learn from it. So thank you for participating today. Thank you so much, Jessica. Lots of fun and I definitely love the purple water. <laughs> I said my next bath is going to be purple water. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to put lots of color in it to get it purple or only a little? I used watercolor, so liquid watercolor, and I needed three drops. Mm, okay, well, that is really, really good to know. And those of you who enjoyed the lesson, I know Jessica's coming back in a couple weeks, so stay tuned. But if you want to know what's coming up next week, next week on Tuesday, we have orientation and mobility problem solving, mm, travel skills. On Wednesday, we have likable versus likes, strong and safe communication on social media. I don't know, you might or might not be a crew that likes this, but Thursday is farm animals. You might enjoy the farm animals session. So I'm going to say thank you again, Jessica. Woohoo! I enjoyed it very much and we will see you again soon. Wonderful. Bye.